This little Christmas stocking gift bag is one that I made for my book, So Eco-Friendly. The idea being that you're not wasting gift wrap paper every year. You've got something that you can put gifts in that you can't see because it's got a drawstring on the top, but you can use year after year after year. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the larger version. So it's made in a very similar way. It's just bigger so you can fit more in it. So here's how I made it. So the first thing to do is to draw the shape of our stocking. So I'm going to draw a line across the top of my paper, and this can be any size that you like. So the top of my stocking is going to measure seven inches across. I'm going to draw straight down to the bottom by about 14 inches, and the same on this side. Then we need to draw in the shape of the foot, and this, to be honest, is going to be pretty freehand. So I need to round off the bottom from this side, and then make a toe from that side. And keep it quite, quite chunky, quite fat. Um, remember, you are going to have a seam allowance around here as well. So it doesn't matter if your toe is pointing down a little bit more, it doesn't matter if it's pointing across, and it doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same shape and size as mine, um, but as long, as long as it looks like a stocking. Then let's cut out the shape, and this is going to be my template. And then from this, I'm going to cut two pieces from my Christmas fabric and two from lining. Now to the wrong side of the outer pieces I'm going to fuse my fleece. So I'm using an H640. You could use an interfacing if you prefer but I do think it needs something to give it a little bit of stability. So if you're using fleece knobbly side to the back of the fabric this is a Valiseline, which does like a bit of steam. So follow your manufacturer's instructions if you're using a different type of interfacing. Some of them don't actually like steam. Then we're going to sew these two pieces right sides together, all the way around, but leave the top open and do the same with the lining, so leave the top open, sew all the way around here, but we're going to leave a turning gap in the straight side of around about four inches. So I'll pop a couple of pins in here. By the way, if you wanted to add anything, so if you wanted to do a little bit of patchwork or applique or put a name on here or something, do it at this stage before you put it together. I'm leaving mine quite plain because the fabric is um, very heavily patterned and I think, I think it doesn't need anything else. Okay. Now I'm going to snip into the inside curve here, so quite close to the stitches but obviously not through them, and then trim back some of the fabric just around the toe. And that's going to help to cut down on the board. No need to do that with the lining, just do that on the outer piece. And then the outer piece we're going to turn the right side out. To make the cuff, I've cut my fabric and I'm going to fold it in half and press it. I'm not going to put any interfacing on the wrong side of this one because I, I don't think it needs it. Then I'm going to sew the ends together to make a tube. Mm -hmm. 
and make sure your fabric is the right way up. If it has a print on it like this. I'm also going to make a little loop of ribbon to go on the back and to hang my stocking up with. And I need my drawstring section too. So again, this is folded in half and pressed. Now this time, I'm just going to fold in the seam allowance and press it. Same on this side. So this is on the shorter edges. And I'm just going to top stitch across where the crease is here. So that's where the fold's going to be. This is going to be where the channel is, where I thread the ribbon through to make the drawstring. So just about a um, couple of inches will be fine. fold this back together again, opening up the seam allowance and I'm going to sew up to the stitches that I've just made. Turn this over and I'm going to sew straight across the top of here, uh, just over half an inch from the top. So however wide your ribbon is, you'll need to make sure that this is slightly larger so that you've got enough room to actually thread the ribbon through. Now let's piece this all together. So take your outer bag and I'm going to put the cuff over the top first of all with the seam here matching the seam at the back of the stocking. Then I'm going to take my piece of ribbon that I'm going to hang this with and that goes facing downwards, looped over, right over that back seam. And if you want to pop a few pins in here as you go, that's fine. If you wanted to, you could sew all of these layers together separately now, but I'm going to do them all together over the top of this will go our drawstring section. So again with the gap, you will have a gap at the back. That goes on top of there. So I'll pin that. I will I think I will sew this part actually before we put the lining on. So if you have a free arm on your sewing machine, this is a good time to use it. So 
sew through all layers and you go quite close to the edge so within your seam allowance and the final part is to put the whole stocking inside the lining Push this all the way down to the bottom. And again, you're going to match up that seam at the back. And the seam at the front. And so all the way around. And then we can turn everything through that turning gap that we left at the side of the lining. And then we'll just put a few stitches in there to close the opening. back on now and then let's push the lining inside the stocking right down to the toe And we have this, so there's the ribbon at the back, and there's my drawstring. So let's take another piece of the ribbon that needs to be a little bit wider than the um, than the stocking. Pop a pin on the end and thread it through the channel. drawstrings a little bit long and then we can pull this up and tie it just neaten off the ends of the ribbon and that's my stocking finished hope you enjoyed it Hope you enjoy making yours. I'll see you again very soon. <laughs>